you really do. You're a 21 year old punk fucking kid. This grandpa's given you everything all your fucking life. You've never had a car payment, a house payment. Everything you live in was given to you by grandpa. You fucking don't know what it's like to work for a fucking living like I do. To bust my fucking ass and do what I do. And you know what, Sean? You fucked me, and that's the way you got it. But you know what? Your grandpa's money will run out someday, and you'll have to feast for yourself. Get a fucking job, you piece of shit. Welcome to Behind the Smoke Podcast, Barbecue War Stories. My name is Sean Walchef with Cali Comfort Barbecue. We are recording above the butcher shop in beautiful Spring Valley uh, with Derek Marceau. How are we doing today, Derek? Well, got to get this microphone over here, boys. There we go. I'm um, doing well. Doing awesome. Everything Feeling better? Is... Dude, this, this flu was Ooh. no joke. It got Ooh. me. I was, uh, I've been laughing at people that got it, and I'm like, you know, I'm just a <laughs> fucking strong dude. I just don't got an iron stomach, and man... When she hit, she hit. Yeah, it's... I haven't been in my bed like that, like literally shaking in just uncontrollable shakes with like just pouring sweat. And you know, I haven't done that in probably 15 years from when I used to get hung over in college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my wife, she's really sick right now. And Colleen, he, you know, my son, he's eight months old. And we, we had to make a trip to Radius Children's Hospital because um, it was that bad. I mean, it's it, it's serious. And thankfully, he's feeling better and She's kind of on the the bad end of it right now, but uh, I think what they say with him? Nothing. Just uh, you know, he had a fever. Um, he had a lot of what mucus. was it? Uh, I don't know. It was some virus. No, but what was his fever? Uh, One hundred. Yeah. Fuck no. Yeah, dude. I remember when we first had our first kid, and mm-hmm. they're we like, dude, it's one hundred two. It's like we got to go to the. And they're like, <laughs> dude, yeah, come back when it's one hundred five. Really? And now, like, now you feel so with helpless. Decker, you're like, it's like one hundred three. I'm like, dude, he's you're fine. fine. You feel totally so helpless. Fine. It is. It's a helpless feeling, and you know when they f- just look so lethargic and they don't want to move and stuff. It's uh, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. But uh, where uh, our our bodies are capable of crazy shit. That's right. Just keep going. And burn off that uh, that that fever, and hopefully both of them uh, get well soon. Well, for those of you that are tuning in for the first time, we appreciate you checking out the show. Uh, this is a business and digital marketing podcast. Uh, we're doing it on Facebook Live, so those of you that are watching on Facebook Live get to uh, see it early. Um, but the podcast comes out every Friday at 3.59 a.m. on all the podcast platforms. Uh, we include a voicemail from my former business partner at the beginning of the podcast to kind of set the tone to let people know that uh, we started this podcast to talk about the things that happen in business that typically aren't discussed um, in business school. Uh, today's an actually ac- excellent time because we get to speak with the director of San Diego State Sports MBA program, uh, Scott Minto, number four ranked globally. Congratulations. That is a huge, well, I didn't huge, even know that. Yeah, huge thanks. accomplishment. Good on you, dude. That's thanks. pretty cool. So we're, yeah, we're honored to have you here. Uh, sports is something that drives Derek and I. Uh, it started our friendship. We started, uh, we became friends because I asked him to help with us uh sponsor an amateur barbecue contest to raise money for local youth sports and uh, that was all based on barbecue and based on our love of giving back and uh, really what we taught on what what we learned through sports Um, so it's opened up many doors for us I mean you know we wouldn't be up at the Del Mar races uh, wouldn't have friendships with Craig Dato who runs the track up there wouldn't have friendships with Ernie Hahn who runs Valley View Casino Center uh, Matt Savant, who runs the Gulls. Uh, we just had Josh Gross, uh, who's bringing the Seals to town with uh, their whole front office. And, you know, in hospitality, there's so many opportunities to get involved with sports uh, if you love it as much as we do. And we're just so lucky to have you here today to uh, tell us about the program and tell us what, um, you know, what kind of opportunities you're creating for students. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Now you have a friend on Montezuma Mesa. I see you came equipped with your Aztec jacket, so thank you for doing that. I know you're a Torero, so that must be a little challenge for it, you to it, see all that is, red. It is a challenge. I'm more of a blue guy. Yeah, that's all right. I'm more of a blue guy, but I did this for you. That, that's, I that's appreciate how, it. That's out, of, that's out of respect. You're a better pre- man than me. We, we, <laughs> appre- we appreciate your time. And, you got to um, give me a memo. Derek's get, a purple only memo. guy. Yeah, Dude, I am. You know, it's funny. Is my son's favorite color is purple. And really? Like, not even... He just loves loves everything purple, and he's three really? years old, and I'm like, fuck That's yeah. probably a lot of it around the house, no? No. You know, I actually... Uh, Derek I has nothing in his house, I like nothing uh, about football at his house. I won't house. do anything like that. I, I, I strictly, I choose not to for a reason. I don't want my kids to ever feel like they have to live up to anything I've ever done. That's fair. And I want them to be their own person, so I, I don't put any of my accolades up. I don't put any All-American awards, any football awards, any nothing. Um, <clears throat> I don't want it just, you know... 
in their face all the time. And, sure. and so I just want them to kind of choose their own path. And, but don't kid yourself. They're going to be fucking amazing. Whatever they do, <laughs> I'm going to push them or whatever they do, but you know, they, they're going to be their own person for sure. So welcome to uh, behind the smoke. Yeah, Are thanks you, for having me. Excited it's, to be here, or what? It's great. It's really nice to be mentioned in the same company as some of the sports business heavyweights in San Diego with Ernie and Matt and Josh and all those folks. That really, I'm going to have a tough act to follow, but I'll do my best to represent SDSU and our sports MBA program as best I can. Well, one of the things that I do appreciate uh, the reason why we even connected was because you're a monster on Twitter. Uh, Twitter is how Jim Trotter and I became great friends and uh, Jeff Dotseth as well as the late CS Keys. Um, it's one of those things, the digital marketing side, that it's kind of like the oh shit moment, the holy shit, like look what the internet can do. And I think that's one of the things Derek and I continue to learn every single day with the podcast is when people tell us where they're listening and how it's helping them or that we're full of shit. Either way, uh, we appreciate them reaching out. And uh, for us having you here now we can hear you know what you guys got going on and i i know you have a podcast for your students tell tell us about that and why that was important yeah we wanted to branch out and sort of give the students an outlet to interview some folks to get them noticed out there because it's it's not just now what your online googleable presence is it's actually what kind of content are you putting out into the world so we invested in some some mics and screens just like these and we want students to be able to take the reins and interview people and go alone now I'll, I'll jump in the chair occasionally and call up an alum or a friend of mine that graduated from the program and ask them to, to be on and talk about their experience but primarily that's for the students it's a resource for them um, they've recorded two so far this year they've been here only six weeks so we've had students come in and just one recap what they've been up to we work the farmers open the first week that they're here they're out on Tory all four days I was love that. Exciting. with a century club and then uh, they did a, a basketball themed podcast we have an alum who works in the NBA he was out west for the all-star game offered to come down and speak to the class and they say hey, well you know can we interview you in our podcast so it's something that they're learning to do not everyone is 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 comfortable in this environment so it's something that i think we're heading toward and i give you guys a lot of credit for being a barbecue restaurant and and an amazing butcher shop and and market here in beautiful spring valley but you guys are out there putting a spin on on your businesses through this medium and i give you a lot of credit for doing that it's not something that even big companies or big organizations have embraced just yet but you guys are out there doing it and that's how we were fortunate enough to meet through social media and this podcast has been great i told you guys before we get on air i've listened to about a dozen of them i plan to get through the rest as time (laughs) allows but um and i I really enjoyed all the episodes you've done so far i look forward to see where you take it well we we appreciate you tuning in it means a lot to us for someone that's as busy as you are trying to build a a program um you know really tell us about how you got in got in i know you were uh you were a graduate of the program yeah i was in the first class so wow I actually uh came out west because of the program i graduated from georgetown university in washington dc studied international affairs there and uh sort of wanted to take a different path and pursue sports um my senior year was actually 9 11 uh, september 11th of my senior year so i was two weeks in to my last year of college going down a path of studying science and technology and international affairs looking at inter- world security and, and international security and that all just kind of got turned on its end uh you know a tuesday morning in september and obviously uh just like sam the cooking guy said a lot of other people had it a lot worse but that was something that that turned his life around and it did the same for me because that no longer became a reasonable career path for me. I studied abroad in Spain. I did not speak Arabic. I wasn't interested in <laughs> counterterrorism, and I, I really didn't have a have a place at that point. So I was looking more at okay, what do I like to do? And and for me, that was sports and, and sports marketing. That led me out to the program. I, I just frankly Google it. What are are there sports specific MBA programs? You know, if I were interested in another field, I might have I might have googled hospitality or something different but i i wanted to know if there were sports programs in in 2004 they launched this program at sdsu alongside the san diego padres uh, their owner at the time john moores which is now several iterations of the of sure. team ownership right. ago uh reached out to sdsu founded the program and they put it in what's now known as the fowler college of business through the padres current owner ron fowler but it started back in those days uh, with with some very baseball heavy 
students. We had about 30 in our class. I think 20 something of us were interested in baseball and a few others, but it was my goal to get into this industry and figured if I got a degree that was focused on the space, then that would be a nice leg up to what I knew was a very competitive industry. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, one of the things I wouldn't, I, we wouldn't have opened up the restaurant if it wasn't for the liquor license, the type 47 liquor license that allowed us to sell liquor as well as beer, um, and bring it into a breakfast concept, but also add the sports bar entertainment to the concept, having TVs, quality TVs, quality programming, being able to have a place that's family friendly, but you can also watch NFL Sunday ticket, watch the game that you want to watch. Mm -hmm. Uh, those things were, were, were priority for us. And, you know, frankly, we've incorporated them into our business plan and, you know, doing events that are sports related, uh, whether that's with little leagues and Pop Warner teams or whether that's with professional sports franchises. Uh, we, we work really hard to try to create those opportunities for ourselves. So owning a sports bar here in San Diego, I have to ask the question, what impact did the Chargers leaving have on your business? Huh. Have you seen one? <laughs> uh, actually, it did. You know, significantly, you know, San Diego is a fair weather town. We're probably the number one fair weather town. And uh, with or without the Chargers, you know, I've been a season ticket holder since, I want to say 2005, um, but I've been going to games my whole life. And, you know, when we're 1-15, in 15, there's a core group of diehards that are out in the lot tailgating you know, our people in H3, they were there tailgating no matter what the record was. And that was just a lifestyle. That well, was something are, that we did. I remember those. I've been down to H3. That's yeah. some intense folks. Intense folks. <laughs> those, that's how we like our circus. We like uh, we like characters and we like intense folks uh, because they have a passion for life. You know, they have a passion for it's not just about football. It's not just about chargers. I mean, you know, my wife, uh, the second date we went on, I took her to a tailgate because she needed to know what she was getting involved with. Did, uh, did it open up? more versatility though for you guys what's that to have the chargers gone have for more charge. you know more steeler fans will come in now or is are you seeing a, an influx on you know the different demographics coming in you know different team different team uh every season we have a different you know we we have some fans that are you know that are just loyal to the restaurant they come through but as far as like groups of fans um you know we've seen a significant drop off in the amount of people that come out for charger games you know i would say on game day you know we'd probably be down 30 percent from what we used to be but that right. doesn't you know impact our business in a way that we closed our doors because of it. You know, their tilted kilt is no longer in Mission Valley. Um, they're no longer in downtown. And, you know, some people. I mean, nobody makes it downtown, though. But if you're, I mean, if our business plan was built on eight, eight regular season games, um, then we have a bad business plan. You know, yeah. we're open 363 days out of the year. So uh, it's important for us to find other ways and have great food and have great barbecue, have great service, have great hospitality. So, you know, it's really just a bonus on top. Have you found that it, people kind of transfer their spending? Maybe they go to more UFC fight nights at your place or they come in during the week a little bit more. I mean, it's the same people with the same discretionary income. Um, you know, are they, I, I wonder if they're, they're spending it other days. Or, it's a good or, question. I mean, I think it's kind of hard to quantify. You know, one of the things that's fascinating for us running a sports bar is just what's happened in the last 10 years with, let's just say ESPN and call it sports center. I mean, I grew up as, you know, Jack and I, our best, we became best friends because when, when we went to each other's house, it was, we sit there and we watch sports center, you know, Dan Patrick, we watch Chris Berman and, you know, we developed those friendships and yeah, we were playing basketball growing up or we were playing tennis growing up, but we would follow football, you know, we would follow whatever the sport was and that cross utilization of what was hot and what was something cool. Or if this was the big boxing fight or this was the big UFC fight. Now it's become very segmented, you know, and um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it's not a bad thing. It just makes it harder to quantify, you know, really what that sales volume is on those days, you know, regarding the chargers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. For us, it hasn't really done much of anything. I mean, we only had really high peaks when they were in the playoffs. So people would come in and get carne asada and tailgate and all that stuff. We didn't have a lot of people that uh, would come in and just do it every week. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, actually, I mean, I bet we're busier now on Sundays than we were when the Chargers are here. I, I, yeah. I don't think that's, with, you know, I think that's just uh, how it is. People are just, you know, doing other things and having people over and barbecuing and, you know, life goes on for us. I mean, yeah, it's not, yeah. not a big deal. 
You know? Sean, you mentioned 10 years. I wanted to congratulate you on the Thank 10th you. anniversary. Thank Kelly you. Well, yeah, you guys closed down, went out to a Gulls game. I saw that. that Congratulations. Was, That's a big you. milestone. Yeah, it was uh, It was a big deal for us to close the restaurant. Uh, you know, we, we made a commitment uh, during one of our staff breakfast club meetings that if we got enough people that wanted to go to the game, that we would close the restaurant. And um, turns out we got enough staff that wanted to go and bring their friends and family. And we rolled about 159 deep in the Gulls. Uh, took care of us. Levy, uh, Robert down there, they were great to us. Uh, that's where we sell our barbecue. And that's the concessionaire for Valley View Casino Center. And, you know, we had a penalty box. We had, you know, took care of some of our staff that are doing a great job as servers or doing a great job as bartenders. They got to sit for pregame warmups in the penalty box. We had Steven on the Zamboni. We had Erica on the Zamboni. They loved it. It was really, it was really yeah, it was really cool. I want to drive that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to see you drive that. Yeah. I, 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 doubt, I, would I doubt they'll let that. me, but I would pay for that. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So how's, has it, have you seen a big growth or how are you pulling the people into the NBA program? What's, uh, what are you guys trying to do to, to get people to come on? It's funny. Growth for us doesn't mean numbers in growth of the program. We try to stay in the 25 to 30 students a year range. Growth mm-hmm. for us is just an increase in quality of where we draw people from, what kind of experience they have, um, what their future looks like for us. We try to project out, uh, who's going to be successful in this industry. It's, it's, pretty competitive industry and we don't want to take folks who we don't believe will be successful. Like we're not one of those programs that is a turnstile where you, we take 90 or hundred people a year and hope they make it. And maybe right. five or six of them do. We, we, we take 25 to 30 this year. We have 28 students and I would like to shake 28 hands at graduation and, and hear about 28 great sports jobs. So we draw from all over. Uh, we have international students, Every year, maybe 15, 25% of our class will be international. This year, we have a student from China, a student from Japan, a student from South Africa. So they come from all corners of the globe. We're probably, as you could imagine, 50% California. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're just, it's a big state and sure. we're, we're in it and we draw a lot of people. We don't draw too frequently from San Diego. We get people from NorCal and, and from LA area, um, just cause it's a giant population. <laughs> and, sure. and, um, but we, we want to make sure that people are successful. For, so for us, growth is in increasing our quality, increasing the quality of the product that we offer, increasing the engagement with our alumni, making sure that our students who come in, have a great experience while they're here, give back once they graduate and come back and speak, hire someone. I mean, ideally like give, give a job to a a talented up and comer from the program. But for us, we want to keep in that sweet spot of students, but we want to make sure we get better and better students. And uh, the ranking certainly helps. It was uh, last year was the first year we put up to uh, be included in the rankings. And we were really thrilled to, to jump into the top five and the other folks, other programs there have been around for four or five times as long as we have. So we we're a 12 year old, 13 year old program that is now um, considered among the global elite in the space. And we're happy with that. We want to keep growing in terms of quality and not quantity. Does every college have one? No, no, no. Uh, it's a pretty rare thing. Um, on the West Coast, there aren't even maybe a handful that I would consider peers of ours because we're an MBA program. Right. There's a lot of sports administration or sports management programs, and, and I'm not here to, to knock those. It's not what I chose. Right. Uh, I wanted an MBA. I didn't want to just go and you know learn about uh, grass growing and putting white lines on the field. I wanted to make sure that I learned stats and accounting and finance and things that businesses really need to operate. And, uh, so for us, uh, it's a, it's a crowded space, but it's not, uh, it's not ubiquitous. There are a lot of programs that are popping up. Um, you know, 12, 13 years ago, we were a program that popped up, but we made a commitment as the, the follower college to invest in the program, to make it grow, to make sure we got our best faculty teaching in it. And, you know, if you really kick the tires on programs out there, you'll see that there's a big difference uh, between us and some of the peers that we might have. They, they have sports in the title, but the quality is nowhere near it. My students are going to spend the next three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, cramming for a stats midterm on Tuesday. Um, that is that it's a beast and it, right. it will it will hurt you if you don't study. So that's a, compare that to some programs out there where the kids are just kind of hanging out and, and it's a, it's night and day. So the quality of student we put out has that training and that rigorous experience and it makes them a better hire. So guess who gets hired? It's, yeah. it's going to be the folks who have really prepared and trained. Is there a, a like an, 
a waiting list of people that want to get in? How does that work? Well, we have a, we have a pretty rigorous and selective admissions process. So we every year we, we pull people in every January. Okay. So our admissions is August, September, October. Uh, and then they, they move out to San Diego or, or start school in January. So we have – last year we had almost double the amount of people apply that we could – reasonably accommodate so wow. we, we had a lot of people we had to say no to and it's unfortunate i didn't, never want to be the bad guy to say no but uh and do you already, write those letters it's a warm letter i mean I'm, <laughs> i sign it yeah. um but uh, you know we you let people down as easily as you can that's a letter not a phone call i, I have i have three of those letters do you not from you not from me I no they're from uh the law schools in san diego oh well that, so I those three to, just I, saved you a lot of money I, and a lot of time Sean. I, applied, I applied to all three law schools and okay. they, all, they all rejected me but i framed the letters great that, that's the that's best great. thing that could have happened to you no it's my, it's my yeah it's my locker room poster board material <laughs> uh yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just it part is. of the deal that's saved a hundred and plus grand in three years of your life. I wouldn't be here podcasting and talking to you about sports and, uh, you know, have a relationship with Derek. I mean, none of this stuff would, would exist. You know, I, I could be, you know, living on the other end of Sam, the cooking guys, you know, dream and being at a law firm that I hated going to and, you know, working for money and what, what we're able to do and the opportunities we're able to create because of barbecue, because of sports, because of hospitality, uh, you know, I absolutely love it. And it, it yeah. fires me up every single day to be able to go out and do stuff like that. I mean, putting on a barbecue, professional barbecue contest during a horse race, you know, talking to Craig Dato and trying to figure out how do we load in professional barbecue teams to, uh, you know, not jeopardize the sport, you know, that they're doing the Pacific Classic for a million dollar race. I mean, that, it, there's a lot of logistical challenges, but that's that's the exciting part. Yeah, and you're happy doing it, I'm sure, right? Love it. This is you get up every day and you it. do oh, cartwheels on the way to work, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's it definitely I mean, I don't know about fun, <laughs> uh, but it definitely is exciting. It's um definitely something that we love and you know, when people talk about that they they hate what they're doing, you know, I, I get it, you know, you gotta grind sometimes and get through those things. But once you find what you what you're truly passionate about, it's you know, there's always going to be hard times in it. It's not going to be just easy all the time, but it's a ton of fun and very, very re rewarding when you do it right. Um, that's what really drives us every single day to make sure that we, we continue to do that stuff and, and stay hungry and, you know, continue to learn and, and strive to, to do the best we can. Um, you know, that's so important, you know, just in every single thing that you do, you know, so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked every day usually. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, what you're doing and creating a culture of excellence in the program and having high quality standards, I mean, that's something that is very attractive for someone like me to see because you're setting the bar up for the people that are coming through your program. You know, I, I look through your entire deck that you guys put out there and, you know, 802 is unacceptable. <laughs> Class starts at 8. It does. And, you know, those are things that we talk about, Dude. you know, to our staff. Because if you're not punctual, there's a problem. Yeah. And that starts in the beginning. But that you're setting them up for success la later in life. Yeah, I mean, we have certain standards that are there because I want students to be able to s finish classes on a Thursday and Monday morning, show up in a in a conference room in downtown San Francisco working at an agency and not miss a beat. I yeah. want them to go to New York City and be able to fit in and not have a six month learning curve like, whoa, this is hot. This is fast paced. This is a, whoa, I didn't like, we're business casual every day. Not because I like to support the khaki industry. I'm just here because I want you to get, you can always come down, but I want the students to have an experience where they're, they're, they're feeling like they're at the highest level already. And that yeah. was something that we had to kind of implement from scratch, you know, this program was a startup when I was, it was in year one. It was like a, you know, I'm sure that Cali Comfort lo and, and looks a lot, this market's been open for many <laughs> the years, but the breakfast yeah. restaurant year yes. one of Cali bar Comfort was a different place, right? Like, yeah. and, you, and you learn from your mistakes and you say, Hey, you know, it'd be great if we did this. And we're fortunate enough to have a lot of legacy in the program of alumni who have come through and you can see, Oh, this works. Like, Oh, I, I'm coming to this program and I'm going to do these things. And this is the culture of it. But then you hear from alumni almost weekly who come in or they Skype in or you go visit them when you're in the Bay Area or Chicago, New York. And you're like, oh, okay, this this makes sense. Like th this office looks like this. And that's what I was used to back at SDSU. So it, it makes us stand out. I mean, the coffee cart people know who my students are, which makes it easy. Sure. But, you know, those standards didn't come from thin air. They came from preparing you for what's next. And and the sports industry, as cutthroat as it is, you need every advantage you can. Absolutely. You have, to, you have to make up the difference in the margins. We're not Harvard. We're not Stanford. These guys are coming out with an SDSU MBA, which is great, 
but the all the things in the margins are what's going to make them hireable over some other folks who might have gone to a you know a globally ranked uh MBA program. We're a globally ranked sports MBA program. Great, but you have to make sure that you're you're really good to get in with with a, a difficult. It's it's not only good, but you have to be relevant. You know, you have to have your pulse on what's actually going on. And you know, Ari Siegel turned me onto the Sports Business Journal, and it's literally one of the my favorite things that I read because it's it's literally like reading Darren Ravel's Twitter feed, who he covers sports business. Right. You know, it's not sports media. It's it's literally the business of sports, and um, it's so niche down, but it's so applicable to so many different things um, across all different sports properties: sponsorship side, uh, hospitality side, concession side, uh, labor side. Uh, you name it, and it's in there. And you guys are in that magazine. Yeah, you know, the, literally, I, I saw you, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is San Diego State. This is rad." <laughs> yeah, well, that like, costs some money, but we are, we are there. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm aware of that. <laughs> What's setting you guys apart from uh, other sports NBA you know, universities? You know, you guys are both San Diego locals, right? Yeah. Okay, so this market is the ideal place to come and be a student of this industry. Um, you know, I, I was telling Sean earlier, it, it didn't really impact our operations much when the Chargers left town uh, because we only had one alum work for them for a number of years. We've got three people with the Padres, two with the Gulls, one already with the Seals. With the Seals right? right? Yeah. So, like, this sports market is just such a wonderful incubator. Uh, two guys with Aztec Athletics. Um, we've got so many opportunities here in town to study and be involved in the sports industry. A lot of our peers, if you were to look, they're in college town USA. Yep. And that cool. There's an athletic department there for sure. Right. Uh, and that's great. But beyond that, if you're not interested in working in college athletics, um, you, you're going to struggle to find the right opportunity while you're going to school. Now, maybe you might have to take a summer internship in the big city or whatever it is, but you know, Derek, it, Manhattan, Kansas, what opportunities are there? Dude, there's a lot <laughs> of opportunity. You okay. can go to Walmart. You can no. go. Um, I was actually just thinking about that. I mean, we're two hours away from Kansas City, from the Chiefs or the um, yep. uh, Royals. You yeah. know, it's you can't, you don't have really, what else do we have? We've got three alumni with the Chiefs. Uh, MLS yeah. team. <laughs> so we've got, we've got our Kansas finger City. on the pulse of the KC scene. But yeah, it's um, two, two hours away. If you were going to go to grad school, in Manhattan, you'd be really limiting yourself. But right. here in San Diego, look, I don't have to sell the city to, to locals, but no. you know this is a wonderful place to live. Life is great. I wouldn't be here if it weren't. But right. when you bring people out here and you say, okay, well, here are the opportunities we can do. And now I mean, we've just added two pro sports teams incredible. in the last four years. It's like, incredible. Is, like, now, now we're growing at an even faster pace to say nothing of the golf industry opportunities, the endurance sports, the mixed martial arts. I didn't like, even think about that. All that it's stuff insane. is here. Yeah. Yeah. It's all here. You can play golf year around out here. Uh, absolutely. Golf, plus you, have, plus you have Cholos. You have right, I mean, you were right next to Mexico. Mm -hmm. There's so many different the cool thing is the startup side. You know, when you get a team like the Gulls that, yes, they're coming back to a market that they've already been in, but they're acting like a startup. So they're doing things in professional sports that typical older sports teams won't do. You know, same thing like the Seals. Yes, they have a front office that has a base in you know, uh, lacrosse, but now they're coming out here and they're adapting and they're finding different ways to engage in fans and engage in community and, you know, get out there, get sticks in the hands of, you know, kids, stuff like that is, you can't get more experience than that. And you guys open up doors like that. And, you know, you bring, you, you give your students opportunities to work in those fields. Yeah. And where I sit, there's so much opportunity for my students. We're doing a project right now as we speak with the Gulls, working with Greg Zweig, who's, awesome. who's an alum yep. from 2012, um, working on sponsorship ideas to help Greg in some categories that he might not have time to dig into because he's servicing 159 yeah. people coming out for exactly. the, from Cali Comfort. But that's a great opportunity for our students to go off and look at – an industry that they might not have thought of. Like not all of them come in on day one saying they want to work in partnerships and sponsorship and activation, but then they go and they dig into it and they realize, wow, there's a lot of creativity here. You know, you mentioned wanting to drive the Zamboni. Right. That's, that's an asset that, you know, maybe you could get if you were a partner at some level. And, and yep. the, the, Greg's talking about wanting to do a, a party Zamboni and have people make it an experience where you have a flat top Zamboni and sure. 15 or 20 people can go out there in the intermission. Like, that's the creative piece of the sports business industry. I want the students to learn. And we only get that access by having great partners like the Gauls or the Seals. So the majority of the teams out here are receptive, but the Chargers just kind of weren't as. I mean, 
you were named Spanos, I guess. <laughs> right. Be able to yeah. get in there. Um, right. But, I, you know, it's just, not, yeah, that's the experience I've had. I can only tell you what, right. what, what the Padres have been wonderful. Uh, every single year we go to the Padres, uh, to a Padres game as a guest of the CFO, Ronda Studios, an uh, Aztec alum uh, who brings our students out and brings in people from community relations, marketing, baseball ops, and talk to the students. We then enjoy a game from a suite. Like, you don't get that experience, uh, you know, anywhere else. And, and that, that, is really just frankly because she really cares about SDSU. And so the teams here that are here now, we're really happy with what we've been able to do with them and look forward to even growing it even more. Sure. Yeah. I think one of the things, you know, for our listeners that they, the amount of opportunity that exists in food, barbecue and sports, it's, it's endless. You know, it's absolutely endless no matter where you are in the world. You know, if you're, let's say you're in London and you're close to the Wimbledon, you can literally figure out ways to activate if you talk to the right people and if you learn the right ways to get involved, you know, literally getting involved because all these events, they need food, mm -hmm. they need hospitality. You know, when you have someone like Tillman Fertitta, who just purchased the rockets for $2.2 .2 billion, and he made his wealth because of Landry's, you know, in gaming, in hospitality, yep. you know, what's the things that he's trying to do to add engagement to sponsorship? Hey, he's, he started doing, you know, the MLB does a first pitch. Now he's doing a charity free throw. If somebody knocks down the free throw, you know, he'll put in $10,000. If they don't, he'll do 5,000, but he's created something for that city, for that franchise, you know, for the people in the front office to go out and sell to market. And to now they have digitally to be able to utilize and say, Hey, look, look who made the free throw. Right. And there's so much opportunity in that space that you have to put in the time to learn about. Like I yeah. don't have students show up on day one and tell me they want to work for Levy no. Delaware North legends sure. that they probably don't know necessarily what that is, but you kind of educate them, go behind the curtain. You talk about the relationships that can be built and how valuable food and bev is for team revenue streams. Now you're talking about a great opportunity for someone with an MBA who's analytics driven um, that can come in there and, and make a difference and, and really stand out. Sure. And you know, the, one of the biggest things is, those sponsorships, they don't happen, you know, as a single unit restaurant, as a single unit butcher shop, we can't expect to go to a professional. We think that there's a barrier to entry, but there's no longer that barrier to entry once you've realized that digitally we can help them, we can help them with our food, and we can do things that we're going to add value in ways that they're not going to actually be even in the sponsorship deck. You know, literally, one of the first things that, that uh, Tillman did was, how can I improve the media dining experience? That was the first thing he did at the Rockets. You know, Smart. <laughs> why, why is that important? It's important because those are the people that are covering your team. Yeah. Even if your team's shitty, they're having great food. They're having a great experience. Now, chances are they might be a little bit more favorable in their coverage of, of your team, of your city, of your property. That that stuff is, I mean, that that's what I love to see. When sponsorship has changed so much, it used to be that the Plus, CEO... Uh, was a golf fan, so you sponsored a <laughs> golf tournament. But, right. you know, I don't know how much hockey you guys grew up watching, but you are sort of a partner of the <laughs> golf little, because little. there's a lot of ROI for you there. Yep. You know, as a partner, as providing food for them, like looking at all that you can benefit each other. I mean, that's that's the way that business has changed. So you don't just have people throwing money around anymore. It's now, okay, this is a strategic partnership in every sense of the word, we get something out of it. The Gauls get something out of it. And that's what we want the students to learn. That's why we're digging into it in the sports marketing class this semester. It's like really, there's there's a lot of science behind it. Sure. How long does it take to get your MBA? Uh, our program is, uh, it's normally two years. Okay. So normally you would do um, you know, fall semester, spring semester, have a summer off, fall, spring. And, and how many done. units is that? That's usually 45. Okay. Um, so for us, we actually are accelerated. We have it in, uh, starts in January, which is a little different. We don't start typically in September like a lot of programs do. We start in January. We do spring semester, which we're in right now, summer, fall. And then the final semester, the students leave the nest and go off and have to work somewhere for six months and for credit. So their last six units of the 45 are two courses, but they're on site somewhere. So we've got cool. students right now, one's at the Ducks, one's at the Chiefs, one's at the 
um, major league rugby offices. One's mm. in New York City with an analytics company. Um, we've got someone at Berkeley. They're all over the map, um, but they're off uh, doing their six month stint. And a lot of those are, are full time jobs. Uh, we average over fifty percent of those internships in that last semester are actually just a full time employee. They manage to get a job and get lined up. So, what types of titles are they getting? I mean, what, when they're coming out of, with the MBA, it depends. Um, if they go into the sponsorship space, they might start as an activation coordinator or an activation executive or a partnership executive, you know, right. salesperson. But they can be data analysts. They can be um, anything really ranging from where. Uh, where their expertise lies. If they're a business analyst, that's a different role than a sponsorship partnerships coordinator or something like that. But it ranges. It depends on their age. Some, some of them are 22, three, right. some of them are in their thirties uh, or on up. So level of experience kind of weighs into that. So they're not coming in in the corner office as CEOs. That's for sure. But um, you know, that'll happen someday. We've had alums who have been out for 10, 12 years who are doing exceptionally well. Um, and, and their titles are looking pretty good right now. Yeah, I know. It's actually pretty cool to see now that, you know, when I was just getting out of high school, San Diego State wasn't really known to be like this prominent school. Yeah. And now, I mean, my little sister, she went to Point Loma Nazarene and she was going to go to San Diego State. She didn't know which one she was gonna, wanted to go to. But then the view at Point Loma, I mean, yeah, really. <laughs> it's a nice view. It's she, tough. It's tough to compete with that view. Right. Yeah. So she, um, but I, you know, she was telling me what it would, what it took to even get into San Diego State nowadays and just, um, the academics and everything that's going on. I'm like, man, I, I, it was not like that 20, I mean, how 15 years ago, mm -hmm. it wasn't, it was just completely different. And it's great to see, you know, people like you just building this, you know, for, for the whole town and for the, for this, you know, for San Diego, it's uh it's awesome to see. Yeah. It's great to, to be able to be a part of it. I mean, the university has come a really long way and, and just even physically the way it looks now, so many new buildings, so many opportunities that are on campus that were never there before. But I think uh, we're going to continue to get better. I mean, it's, a, it's been a sleeping giant a lot of the ways and, you know, co consistent bowl football team nowadays. Right. You know, well, I mean, I, maybe you would have stayed in town, right? It was yeah. so weird. I'd never <laughs> knew. I, ne I didn't get recruited yeah. by San Diego State. And, you know, they, they said because they knew they couldn't get me. And it was like, dude, I was such a mama's boy. All you had to say <laughs> is I could just stay home and I would have stayed home. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't want to, you know, but then thank God I did. I, it was the best thing I ever did. It was sure. actually getting away. But, um, yeah, I mean, I talked to Reggie Bush and Reggie Bush was like, yeah, they never came and said, Hey, let's, let's try to, you know, take a crack at it. They were like, Oh no, we already know you're going somewhere else. We're not even going to try. And I just never understood that concept. Um, you have a ton of athletes back here. And yes. This, you know, and you gotta, gotta go get them. And, you know, now we're seeing that they are, you know, I, I went to, um, my, my high school, they just won CIF and, you know, I went and saw their game and, you know, there was San Diego State people there. It's like, good for them. Yeah. Thank God, finally, you know, coming a long cool. way yeah. for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. How did, uh, how did you become the director? Was so that, was that something you wanted? No, no, it wasn't. Not at all. I, I never planned on it. I, I, I never, um, you don't walk into a restaurant and think I'm going to go in the kitchen and start cooking, but maybe <laughs> you do. But, uh, I went out for the program and was planning to move back to the East coast all along and just sort of said, okay, this is where I'm going to head. But, um, the opportunity presented itself to be kind of a grad assistant and work with the program, trying to help promote it. Um, redo the website. It was year one, right? So mm -hmm. we, we didn't really have our, our, our our sea legs yet. So we were out there trying to do the website, get a new brochure. I was helping recruit class number two as I was in class number one, doing a lot of info sessions and wow. things like that. So when um, the opportunity presented itself about a year after I graduated, I was back on the East Coast in, in DC and the university called and said, you know, we're, we're thinking about hiring a full-time dedicated director. And um, I said, okay, well, look, I'll, I'll come out and do it, but I'm not interested in running like a like a pure money maker program with like a hundred students a year, right. just grab the cash. And, you know, we, we discussed the idea of making it a quality program. It took a while. It took a while to get a culture in place where we knew that our people were good and we were attracting the best people and, and we could get them sort of like you're talking right. about, like, well, I, I'll go after anybody and I know I can get them because this is a great experience. If you want to work in sports, there's really not, many better places to go and study. Do you guys do that? You guys go out and try to get people? Or? You bet I do. I put a lot of you. miles on uh, on, yeah. on my Delta. Yeah, I, I go cool. and 
I'll, I'll sit down with people. I'll get in front of them. I'll, I'll, I mean, You'll I'll podcast. I will get, I will do that. <laughs> uh, I go all over North America. I've been, I've recruited in Mexico. I've recruited in Canada and, and awesome. sat down with people and said, Hey, here's why you should consider coming to SDSU. Mm-hmm. And here are some examples of why this would be a good fit for you. Cause everybody's different. You know, you're talking to someone who might be, four or five years out of college and have a lot of uh, finance experience is a completely different conversation than talking to a, someone who's maybe 22 and wants to work in events. Yeah. You're you're having, you're, you're you're citing different alumni examples for different people. I mean, you can't just broadcast it all out. Like um, having the podcast and other forms of media like that are really helpful because it's, Oh, you want to work in tennis? Great. Listen to this podcast with our alum who works in tennis or, same thing goes for sponsorships or basketball, baseball, whatever it might be. Um, getting content in front of people that they're interested in is really, really critical. Yeah, I think that goes to the you know the digital the digital side, and you know one of the things that impresses me about what you guys are doing at your program is you're you're making statements. You know, you're you put in 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 the packet. We're closed. There's no classes on March Madness. Nope. Non negotiable. Why? Because that should be a holiday nationwide. <laughs> the, we agree completely. It was literally the first thing I did when I got the job. <laughs> I think before I even and like took my jacket off in the office, I said, Hey, from now on, that Thursday and Friday we're done. We're closed. Yeah. So um this year we actually are hosting. Via House Arena on campus will be hosting the first and second round. Right. So oh, yeah, the students that's right. are helping our athletic department. Um, <laughs> that, that's cool. But it's, a, you know, short shifts and they get credentialed, which is really great. So yeah. they'll get to see the, the, the game from kind of behind the ropes, if you will. Um, but that was, everyone should be in front of a TV on those days. Yeah. I remember when we were in college, uh, one of the things we actually told our sociology teacher, a couple of us, all, all of the guys taking the class, like, we're not coming to class. I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, like, why aren't you coming to class? It's the start of March Madness. Yeah. We just, we, we have to, it's a male ritual. We have to watch this. We have brackets. This is important to us. It's a male and female ritual (laughs) now. I mean, this this is is not just the guys from college, but this is uh, it should be a U.S. holiday. Yes. And uh, maybe we'll get there someday. Yeah. I just filled out my first bracket a few years ago. Did you? Yeah. I'd never, never been a huge basketball fan. And, uh, finally did it and i was like man that's actually it's actually kind of cool you it's were true. a college athlete you weren't allowed yeah it's actually a violation <laughs> i mean dude what we, we did go back State, and take some right? things away from you <laughs> i mean people talk about like nowadays what they're doing in sports and you know but what we did when i played it was it was completely different than what they do now you know i had a, a parent come up to me and she's like Derek, can you believe what this coach said to my son and i'm like ma'am that's the nicest thing my coach <laughs> ever said to me if you know it's just completely different when I mean, we we had a thing called wildcat day i mean i don't even know if i'm allowed to say this shit say it but um i mean we had like five practices it wasn't just a two a day it was like five and we stayed on the field the whole time i mean literally they like God gave us like popsicles and like watermelon and water before and, it, and, and had us sit on the grass and they're like, okay, next practice. And you just kept going. And that's in Kansas. It's 118 degrees, hundred percent humidity. I mean, it's just gnarly. I think I lost like 17 pounds that day. And then they wouldn't even let me practice the next day because it was just, you couldn't replenish that much, you know, once they started regulating it, but it was, I mean, just completely different than <laughs> the stuff that goes on now. A lot has changed. Yeah. I mean, for the for the better, I'm not imagine because yeah. I mean you had some of these guys dying and uh, you know you when you're out there you're pushing yourself so hard because you don't want to look weak yeah and then you just push yourself through stuff that you probably uh, you shouldn't sometimes but you know it's just it's in you just to keep going 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 and, and trying to never stop you know for sure uh, tell us uh, a little bit more about your immersion program done um, that you guys do to to give back but also to give the students uh, a different perspective on sport yeah so we go every year to the dominican republic um it's actually the the second thing i did after the march madness day off uh i made sure how that did the we, march madness did that how did, did that go over well totally fine yeah, it was fine. Would, yeah no, we, no resistance except class the day before it's, it's totally easy we, yeah. they're uh instead of monday tuesday thursday we go monday tuesday wednesday it's it's easy Every, everyone can do it yeah. you guys can close yeah anyway i suggest we, we close for well, your sports game. bar you should probably stay open <laughs> <laughs> um that that immersion project with the Dominican Republic actually came from uh, not unlike your law school rejection letters. I yeah. applied for a Fulbright grant in early 2004 to study the impact of baseball in the Dominican Republic and didn't get it. 
And <laughs> this was Great. like, uh, okay, well, let me see if there's another way to skin this cat. So I ended up in San Diego because it was a sports focused NBA that happened to be founded, co-founded with the San Diego Padres. And I thought, all right, if there's an MBA and there's a graduate school experience along with a baseball team, that would give me an in to work on doing something with baseball in the Dominican Republic. This was 2004. It was around the time where a lot of news articles were coming out about um, some prospects being mistreated, some uh, some kids, unfortunately, being really uh, hurt, injured, killed, uh, working out and, and the heat of the, the DR right. and uh, not getting the right medical treatment. And it was really kind of like, wait a minute, this is happening – because major league baseball teams are signing kids at a certain age. And, and mm-hmm. I really wanted to dig deeper into it. Um, looking at a scholarship opportunity was, was thought number one. And then thought number two was, okay, well, if, if I can learn the industry from the inside as a, a grad student, maybe that would be an opportunity. And I had just taken over the program in 2000, late 2007, when the Padres six months later opened their Dominican Academy, it was their first standalone Padres only Academy. It was the absolute class of the island. And uh, that was when Sandy Alderson was president. And they uh, invested quite a bit in it and, and really said, uh, we're going to do this the right way. And um, they asked me co- completely out of the blue, hey, would you be interested in coming down and checking out our academy in the Dominican Republic, having no idea that, you know, previously I was uh, looking at studying that very topic and was one of the reasons That's why I came awesome. to the program. So yeah, it was really good timing and went down there and Ended up, uh, one of the students at the time was a native Spanish speaker, and, and uh, we set her up with an internship that became a job working in community relations. She's still with the Padres to this day, working in community relations. Wow. Um, so that was going on almost 10 years for her now at, at, with the club. But uh, sending uh, someone down there to work with the community really opened our eyes because there's uh, a really stark contrast between the impoverished areas of the Dominican Republic and the gleaming brand new newly constructed high-end air-conditioned wi-fi enabled sports academies that are there from the baseball team so i bring the students down there to learn how the whole process works to maybe impact it in some way like getting a student hired to work on community projects was great i mean it's a, it's an asset that every single mlb team has in that country and the padres were one of the first teams and most uh, involved teams in getting the community on board with their facility. It wasn't just a, a, a castle on the hill. The kids in the community were involved because of that committee, or uh, because of that, uh, the presence of that academy, that community now has a brand new high school. Cool. It's got completely redone elementary school. There's new programs that have been there. I've taken engineers from SDSU to go do environmental assessments down cool. there. There's so much that our students have done. Uh, we do programming with them. We're always going to go to that community. We've branched out. We go to communities by the Dodgers facility. The Mets Academy has always been great to us. So we bring the students down there. To, yeah, it's community service, but it's also a sports business lesson like no other that you'll find because they're down there researching where do these kids come from? How do these prospects get signed? What is the process like? Well, how do they learn English when they, you know, when they come up through these systems and, and get to rookie ball, single A, double A, um, you know, how does that feel for them when they come from this community and everybody knows the Dominicans great at baseball. We know Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz and Pedro Martinez, but you know, where did they come from and what was their journey like? And that, that's something we look at as a group um, pretty closely. we have some really interesting discussions uh, with, with prospects themselves, you know, translating the students when, when necessary. We talk to the people that run those academies. Several have become good friends over the years of ours. And uh, we, we, as a program are really proud of that, immersion because it shows we're not just looking at it at the service level. We want to leave a legacy there. We want to, we go and we raise money and we want to do projects that, that contribute to the community. We don't just want to come and snap photos and, and, and take off. We want to actually leave a mark. And you keep coming back every year, every year you yep. keep coming back. I mean, that that's the kind of stuff that's the impact and those putting the students in that position as it forces them to ask those questions, mm-hmm. you know, and you wouldn't get that if you read it in a textbook, you wouldn't get that if you, heard it on a podcast or saw it on a video, you're literally down there and you're seeing how people live. You guys are welcome to come late June. We'll give you an experience. I'll be in Bulgaria, but. Oh, uh, I won't. All right. Come on down. You have a baby. I'll have a newborn. But I might might take you up on that someday for sure. Because, I mean, stuff like that is, I mean, it it changes you forever. You won't forget it. You know, you won't forget it. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that, you know, that experience that that alumni might take to a front office somewhere else could open up a door that they never thought would would have been possible. Mm-hmm. Um, 
that, that's really cool. What's the growth plan? I mean, there's got to, are you wanting to just sustain where you guys are at and, and keep it kind of a smaller, you know, have a nice footprint where you guys are at, or do you guys want to kind of grow? What do you guys want to do? Well, uh, spoken like a true entrepreneur. I like it. Yeah. Um, we're, we're looking to get better. We're ranked number four right now this year. I, I think number one's within reach within a few years. I love it. And you know, that's, <laughs> that's so, definitely I, I the competitive I'm, 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 goal. I got, <laughs> that's just who I am. I'm like, fucking no, no we got to be right number there. one. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's yeah, go. absolutely. I mean, I, I think there's a lot more we could do internationally as well. Uh, we bring professors in from Europe, from Asia, from Africa. We brought in the last couple of years. We want to grow our presence internationally, um, whatever that means through partnerships, through um, exchanges, things like that. I'd like to try to get to a place where we have an internationally focused program that's almost standalone, where okay. we can have students come here and, and and work on a foreign language. We can have them collaborate with our friends at club Tijuana and go down and work with them or with the Toros and, and, and TJ and, and work with uh, an international team 20 minutes away. I mean, there's so much opportunity here in San Diego to keep growing. Um, I think it would be great to host more um, international events. I'd like to grow what we're doing in the Dominican Republic. I mean, there's, there's a lot more that we could do with uh, without really adding to our headcount. It's more like, all right, if we get really, really good people, and let them run free and give them resources, then we're going to see some really good things happen. So tell, go ahead. Go ahead. tell me about the stadium. Oh, I'm not authorized to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I leave that That's to good. our AD and our wonderful people in marketing communications. Perfect. Perfect. Fair uh, enough. I think we've had enough stadium talk in San Diego anyways. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. It's, it's never, uh, Hasn't done well for us yet, but no, we'll see. But hopefully there's smarter people that are working on it to uh, come up with a way because it is, I mean, it's so vital to the region. I mean, we just have such an incredible, incredible city that we all love and that we know that, you know, there's incredible partners now with the Gulls and with the Padres and, you know, San Diego State and UCSD and USD. And there's there's great people here yeah. and we want to have more events like the breeders cup and more events, more final fours and more, mm -hmm. you know, UFC matches, more big ticket boxing can't have them without facilities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those things uh, obviously hopefully are getting worked on. Um, what else Derek? No, I was just going to say, if you go to San Diego state, do you have a kind of an inside track to get into the sports NBA? Um, not necessarily. Yeah. Um, no, we, we have two young men from SDSU, who are undergrads last year who came in, they're working on the adaptive sports program. They've done some amazing things. They created it. One of them was a Paralympian in Rio and, uh, he came back from the Paralympics last oh, summer wow. or in 2016 and his senior year at SDSU worked to build an adaptive sports program. So those guys, their energy was so uh, infectious that I said, you know, guys, we can, we can build on this. If you come to the sports MBA program, it'll give you an extra year at SDSU. You can try to build this out. So those two young men are, are doing great and they're, they're uh, certainly the type of people we look for, but we want the best people no matter where they went to undergrad. Gotcha. What, what is, the cost a person we is it in state different than no it's the same we're uh 48 000 and change uh across the board which is really reasonable um a lot of these programs for the two um, years for a year and a half yeah uh, that's right all in that includes our dominican trip um if you've ever been to sdsu it includes faculty staff parking which is worth its weight in gold <laughs> uh, but there's a um, we used to get so many fucking tickets <laughs> i mean it was so bad but you weren't like the ucla football team where you guys would take the uh didn't they get busted for having the uh Dude, you know what, the handicap what, the handicap parking no but what i did is i would get a ticket <laughs> then i'd take it then i'd go park somewhere and i put the ticket back in my windshield so it looks like they already, you ticketed, already ticketed me, me? yep that was smart what, what did jeremy do <laughs> A Clary? Yeah. I don't know. He's fucking, he was probably in class like 30 minutes before. <laughs> he was good. He was a good guy. I was bad. I was a bad one. You were the bad one. <laughs> Somebody's got to be the bad one. Yeah. So uh, what, what's your guys' uh, social media policy for students? Um, we want them to be out there as much as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to just make sure they get as much content out. If I could stream our, our lectures every day. I would, I want, I want people to know how much fun the students are having. I mean, they have the best year of their lives, all of them when they, when they're here for me, it was the, the friendships that I made 
when I was in SDSU in 2005 in the, in the sports MBA program, continue on to this day. I've been in several weddings with my classmates, uh, including one in Australia. So that was, nice. that was a little bit of a hike. But that but, also uh, got you on a podcast, right? Worked out well. Yeah. yeah. That's how, that's how I originally met Sean. Yep. Yep. yep that's yeah. right. The sports geek. But, uh, yeah, I, I want our students constantly putting what they're up to out there because even their boring days are better than a lot of people's most interesting days. Like Absolutely. Grinding on these stats homework. It's a lot better because you're learning things that are going to give you a leg up in the industry and you're not doing some job that you hate. You know, the, sure. the speakers that we have, um, Hema and Christian both came in this week. Hema uh, and Christian are married. She's with the century club farmers, o- farmers insurance open, and he's with Saquon and their social media had that exact message for the students, like put things out there, get things out. The content is really critical. So if you're a student, you know, you, it's no longer acceptable to just graduate and say, yeah, I went to school. Yeah. People that are looking to hire you are going to, are going to do their digging. They're going to, they're going to try to find Absolutely. out whether you're bad or whether you're good. I mean, it can only help you uh, as long as it's not a negative thing. Like you can, you can put stuff out there like, Hey, we had this speaker. You, you just, you can't be shy. Yeah. It's just one of those things. I, I really want them to, to post as much as possible. Because it, wa- okay. Go ahead. It, it's, it's uncomfortable, you know, literally it's uncomfortable self-promotion and, you know, putting stuff on Twitter or putting stuff on Instagram or doing a story or doing a video, doing a podcast, you know, when we first started doing, all we're doing is each week trying to be a little bit better and trying to bring stories and trying to add value to, you know, the people that are actually listening. And we, we can't, we're so grateful that anyone would take the time to sit down and listen to what comes out of Derek and I's mouth. Um, you know, but it's from those failures. It's from those things that we've created relationships, you know, and that's the power of the internet. It allows us to connect with one another and find people that have a pulse on what, what we love, you know, and maybe they have a different perspective. Maybe that different perspective is, is going to help us out. And, you know, for our hospitality staff, we make sure that, that our social media policy is to be social. And to be proud of being working at Cali Comfort. Mm-hmm. If you're not proud to work there and if you're not proud to put it in your profile, then maybe you're embarrassed to work there. You know, maybe it's just not the right place. But if you are and you're on Twitter or you're on LinkedIn or you're on Instagram and, you know, you're putting stuff out there that you're at the goals game and someone sees that and, you know, it's awareness. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all it is. It's awareness and that's going to help the program. It's going to help the student because um, when the executives, start looking and digging and then they go oh wow this person gets it Mm -hmm. you know look at look at the relationships they've created with someone like jim trotter or scott kaplan or someone in the media that you know is giving them an opportunity to have a a different position in a company that they wouldn't have had otherwise right we have jim trotter coming in in a few weeks do you really yeah that's awesome one of the students reached out to him no way probably from twitter no oh yeah that's awesome Mm -hmm. he's an awesome guy so sean you allow your employees to go on social during their shift? No. Okay. So I, yeah, that's, that's the before the shift, after the shift, it's during the shift because of the focus. And we all know it's hard enough for me to be present without having my phone. And I have, I'm, I'm the worst at it. You know, I have to learn how worst. to worst. <laughs> worst. I'm telling you, you he's, I'm the worst. And he'll walk like this sometimes. I'm like, Sean, Put that thing. Put the, the phone down. down. And my wife, down. Sa- my wife says the same thing. And <laughs> Eric, my general manager, says the same thing. It's just I live in my phone, but that's where I do all my business. And no, I mean it's not it's not a, like a bad thing anymore because people understand what you're doing. It's not like you're just like, you know, looking at dick pics or anything. It's actually you're. Looking but there, at- but there is something to be said about putting the phone down and having a conversation. And you know, I, I you guys make your your students focus on the lecture. Yeah, I don't I'm and it's getting harder and harder every year. I can only but, imagine. but I, I I'm I'm pretty adamant that you be there in the moment. And yeah. our professors are the best you're gonna find in the Fowler College of Business. They're the best at SDSU. We have our outside professors are the best we have and quite frankly they they've earned the right for you to look up at them mm-hmm. for an hour and a half. We give right. everybody breaks. I mean there's uh obviously if there's something going on in your personal life that's an emergency, you can, can check it out. But I just say look, tell everybody, like, hey, yeah. something's going on. You know, I got I gotta I gotta I gotta check my phone every couple minutes because I'm waiting on a something or other. But for the most part, everybody's just kind of playing, you know. Sure. Like, you don't you don't need to look through your social media Every and, single there, and as hour? long as there's opportunities right. before and afterwards for the selfies and the, you know, hey, th- then you can promote it before the event, after the event, you could get some good content, but 
pay attention in the moment. Yeah. And it's, it's a night and day for the, for the professor. You know, I go yeah. over sometimes and lecture over in Europe once in a while. And those kids are, are kind of attuned to just putting their head down in their laptop or, or their cell phone. And it sucks talking to a room full of people where they're not listening. And, yeah. and that experience was one of the main things where I said, look, we're not going to be those people. I want you to listen to the professor. And, you know, if you give respect to people, they give it back. And, and I think we get a better performance out of our faculty because our students have a reputation of listening and paying attention. Yeah, we have the same thing with our servers, our bartenders. I mean, we know if they had their cell phones in their pocket, guess what's going to happen? They're going to sit there and whatever you just said on your they order, whether they're in their pocket? Done. No. Really? I like that, Sean. Not in their pocket. No way. Yeah. Dude, absolutely so not. I'd like to work with you. That's I, good stuff. I, I know what I'll do. Yeah. yeah I'll just I, go I into just the cubby hole and look, pull, pull it out. I mean, I have just, I don't, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm different, but it's for me, I have to let them, they can't be on it. They have to communicate to me if there's something going on with yeah. them. But I mean, I have a lot of employees that they have young kids and, you know, they need to, to check. Oh, does, you, know. you got a phone number at the store? Call the store. Yeah. But that, that's your policy and different yeah. than mine. I mean, and mine hasn't really been an issue. So, um, and I don't have 90 employees either. Yeah. I only have 40. So. Well, and they're also moving around all the time. You know, my guys are sitting there, you know, eight, eight o'clock to 1030. It's a lot more tempting to kind of zone off when you're in an accounting lecture, but you know, guys in your butcher shop are not really, it's not, you just can't do it. You got too much to no. do. Yeah. <laughs> you're not playing your on Facebook. Off. Yeah. No, it's uh, <laughs> definitely, we don't really have a big problem with it. Sometimes we'll, we'll catch them in the back room or something, you know, it's like, come on guys, just, just get off it. But um, for the most part, they're, they're usually pretty good. And a lot of them, I mean, like, uh, you know, Corey's buddy, Ian, he would be on his phone and, you know, people are like, what's he, what's he doing? I'm like, well, he's actually taking pictures to send them to Corey to put on our social. Yeah. I can't, I mean, I'm not going to tell him to do this after work because it's work, you know, yeah. he has to do it. So I mean, that's definitely one of the challenges that's happening now. I mean, once we brought Corey on, you know, as our digital marketing manager, having him out at the events, he would come in uniform just like everybody else, but he was on his phone mm -hmm. and that encouraged other people to think, well, hey, I can be on my phone. <laughs> and as much as I want them to put out social content, like that's actually his job. Yeah. So we ended up saying, don't come in your uniform. <laughs> Just come and uh, not be in your uniform. Roll, you know, roll low pro. Just a big Take hat that content. says, I'm allowed to be on my Pretty phone. Pretty much. Now. I mean, it's like a media flag or something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, so how can people find you? Uh, we're at SDSU Sports MBA on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, or SDSU Sports MBA program. Our website is... Uh, sdsu.edu slash sports mba perfect and everything uh, we talk about will be in the show notes you guys also have a podcast we do and people can listen to the students they they produce that podcast they bring on guests um they i do. love i love the fact that you're letting them take the rain and take it wherever they can they can take it because that's i mean audio is something that we talk about all the time we encourage as many people as possible to audio them. and video yeah it's, audio it's the video. future yeah, yeah for sure. what it is it's it's crazy, man. I never thought I'd be doing it. I mean, straight up. I mean, there's, there's no way I'm, I'm a nuts and bolts kind of guy down in the butcher shop. I'd rather put, you know, I mean, for me, I'd rather break down a cattle than sit here on a podcast, but I had to get out of my comfort zone. And, yeah. and we always talk about finding comfort and being uncomfortable. And it really helped me grow and, and do things that, you know, I didn't think I was actually capable of doing. Well, and, you guys are great at it. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. I've listened to a whole bunch, uh, leading up to this interview and it's been, Really fun to, to get to hear about your business philosophies and the really interesting people you brought in. I'm, I'm just really honored to be a part of it. You know, well, we we're just honored that we actually get to <laughs> sit down and talk to people like you. I yeah. mean, it's, it's cool for us because when else will we be able to do this? There's not going to be a time where we can take an hour out of our days and say, Hey, let's just fucking shoot this shit and figure out. I want to get to know you. You get to know me and let, let's go. You don't do that anymore. We were just talking about the fucking phone, yeah. right? You're always on your phone. You're doing something and it's, it's hard. So it's, uh, it's rewarding in that sense that we can kind of get back to that. And it just teaches us so much that we would never be able to understand, you know, and, and, and we're just appreciative of that. Yeah. So wait, let me get this. So you didn't book Jim Trotter to come talk. No, one of the students did. One of your students mm -hmm. did. So we give out a social, uh, we do a social shout out and we give out a mug every single week. Uh, I'm going to give you a mug to take back to that student because that is, uh, all right. That, that, that's, those are the things we talk about. This and, is for um, you, Greg White. Greg Class White. Class of 2019. Greg White. Congratulations. That is, uh, that is the power. That's the oh shit power of the internet. That's for coffee, Greg. And, uh, 
Okay. You guys are going to be in for a special treat. Jim Trotter is the best there is in the business, and the wealth of experience that that guy has. I mean, publishing the book on Junior Seau, working for SI, yep. being at ESPN. And he's so the, fucking humble. God, he's so cool. Yeah, he's just so, a real, so, real humble so dude. So cool. March 12th, you guys are welcome to come back. Oh, yeah. I will. I oh, will. Maybe. March 12th. That's, Are we here? We're still here. That's a Monday. We'll set you up with some parking. Is that a Monday? So you can come on over. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, fucking oh, I'll, take, I'll take a ticket just for old time's sake. Just <laughs> I'll just park illegally somewhere. Just, just give me one. Just, uh, go ahead and try and tow me, SDSU. Right. <laughs> well, we appreciate uh, those of you guys for tuning in. Thank you very much. Um, please uh, send us your behind the smoke photos, hashtag behind the smoke. Sub- subscribe to the podcast. And uh, when you're in town, uh, check out this SDSU MBA, sports MBA program. Scott, um, Follow him on Twitter too, because he's uh, he's a Twitter monster. He's he's all over the place. Um, really, really cool. Thank you for spending the time with us. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you both. It's really been a pleasure. Thank you. Hey guys, this is Sean and Derek, and we just really want to thank you for listening to the podcast. It means the world to us. We'd like you to go check out BehindTheSmokeMedia.com. That's our website where we have barbecue resources for you to help build your barbecue business. Uh, We also have events listed, so anything that's happening in the West Coast barbecue movement, uh, anything that's going on, we want you to go check that out so you can learn more and get involved. We also have show notes uh, from all the episodes, so anything we talked about in the episodes, you can find detailed show notes there. Um, Plus, you can just get in touch with us. It's important that uh, we're here as a resource for you. So please reach out. Let us know how Derek and I can help you with your barbecue journey. Uh, Get involved. Stay curious. And uh, follow us on social at Barbecue War Stories. Uh, We'll talk to you soon.